So this will be a bit of a different um, type of video where I'm, I'm just going to share my experience of uh, having a heart attack uh, at the age of 38 uh, where I was shocked. Everyone was shocked. And um, so yeah, just to give you a context, like uh, I, I don't smoke a lot. I like smoke 10 cigarettes a day or something and drink a little bit on and off and we all compare, right? Uh, so comparatively, I don't smoke a lot and I don't drink a lot. And uh, health-wise, I don't even, I don't really eat red meat, mutton or beef, uh, just sometimes. Uh, mostly veggies, white meat, you know. Uh, so compared to typical Pakistanis, I don't eat oily food and stuff. I, I eat quite healthy food and then um, again keeping the age in mind I was already on my way of like you know having a morning routine working out uh, in the morning swimming on and off uh, I got myself like the the smartwatch to you know know about my health recently as well ordered some walking shoes we did start walking as well in the neighborhood in the park near our house um, and yeah like everyone else uh, who suffered the last two years uh, of uh, the whole lockdown and stuff so we tried I had like a um, rebounder which is like a trampoline uh, and, and a stepper as well so yeah I was trying to take care of myself and I did not expect this. I did not expect to get a heart attack and that to a major massive one uh, where I almost died. And uh, and yeah, now I'm sitting here telling you uh, all this and I thought I, I, I should, I should share my experience with, with everyone out there because uh, it was uh, what an experience it was. Um, some I believe, some I just can't believe it still, you know. And uh, so, yeah. So, like, for me, um, um, give us a second, I'm, I'm still like. So, uh, so we went to this place called Sakichan, it's like a day trip. You know? And uh, and because one of the museums over there was closed, so we decided just to stay back over there. And uh, yeah, so while driving around, we were just driving. This is a small town. We were driving around, and we just oh, see that town is almost finished. And then I was like, okay, let's see what's that. And let's go a little bit more, and then we turn the car. And, blah. and that's when we saw the clinic over there, the, the local small hospital slash clinic was there anyways uh, fast forward next day in the morning I went and uh, I was flying the drone outside the place we were staying and then uh, and then yeah I go, go got up in Nas and then went to the the paddy fields and uh, we went to the very fields the day before as well but this time we went there for the museum and it was like about 11 o'clock and uh, and so i told her like let, let me fly the drone first uh, get the shots of the paddy field and then uh, meanwhile she was getting the tickets so while i was flying the drone i just felt like this pain you know and uh, before this uh, I did have like a throat infection and I did do a COVID test like seven, five, five days before but nothing, no other, uh, you know, uh, anything happened before that, nothing happened and then anyway, so while I was flying the drone, I was like into like maybe 11th minute or 12th minute of my drone flying and I felt this pain. And I just, just immediately, I just put the drone to come towards me on home. 
and I pressed the button down and on the uh, other hand I was just calling Naz and, and kicking the car so that she can understand also because I couldn't really speak uh, that I need to go uh, I need to go yeah and uh, yeah she came and uh, I just uh, rushed into the car uh, threw everything inside the drone stuff and everything and um, and yeah I was just like in so much pain and, and it was so hot it was so hot first I thought it's just a heat stroke combined with my already I had my chest infection but I don't know uh, so I was just you know hitting myself here and and rubbing and all that and then I suggested I put some water on my head too which helped and anyhow so from there I just told her just rush to the uh, the clinic and uh, to our surprise I don't know how the universe does it in a town that we we don't know anything about uh, we knew I knew exactly where the clinic was and then we rushed there and there uh, and yeah, I just had to keep reaffirming myself that this is, uh, I can fight this and I can do this and I, 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 I don't have to uh, stop, I don't have to stop yet. Um, so we reached there and then eventually a guy came over there, he put something in my hand here. Uh, so many things in my hand have been put. And put something there and then he did my ECG and he said okay there's something is wrong he wasn't sure if it's a heart attack yet so they immediately got the ambulance and on the way I was just I was passing out a little bit but at the same time I was saying all these things to myself that I can't go yet you know I know All those things, you know, just to be strong and stuff. And, and so, yeah, once I reached there uh, to the hospital, they rushed me in and they, they said that, okay, this is a massive heart attack and you need to calm down and they're going to give me something called TB or something, which has, you know, 20% chances of a cardiac arrest. So they're pre preparing me for... Uh, you know taking off my necklaces and all that I told them just to break it and let it be and uh, it was very very painful very painful and I, I just I, it was just like non-stop you're fighting between you and that uh, and two flashes were there and they prepared like they had the whole you know the to revive to electrocute uh, they had that as well and uh, ready you know uh, and they, they gave me the medicine and everything or whatever they gave me and and uh, that's when I just uh, I had like a complete flash uh, flashback of my entire life and and nothing was there nothing of, of material value was there it was just friends it was just family it was just loved ones it was just moments of people uh, that I love and care about and that's it and uh, so this went on for about I think half an hour or 45 minutes uh, till they were able to stabilize me till I realized that I was complaining about the air con and that it's so hot so I knew that okay I think I am getting stabilized and stuff so uh, that was like a crazy experience um, after that, uh, the doctor was very nice and he was very nice. He was a Rao as well. And, um, I don't know how the, all of this comes together. But yeah, so after that, they took me to the ward and uh, I was there for about six days, six, seven days. And uh, initially, like, Nas was with me, uh, but uh, uh, after and well, it was not the whole day she was not allowed to stay the whole time but she was allowed to stay till like 8 o'clock 8 30 9 o'clock at night and she would come every day in the morning so only during that time uh, I got to sleep but in minutes again because Naz was there 
and uh, every time I would sleep, I would wake up with a, uh, you know, shock that, you know, I was just too shocked, man, uh, that if I sleep, I won't wake up again. And so three days, two days, I think Nas was there, and then uh, because I already had my infection, uh, they they thought that um, I had COVID. Uh, so just to be safe, you know, they they did do a test before, but just to be safe, they they uh, separated me from everyone everyone else, and Nas couldn't meet me also. Now this this period was like very very tricky for me because um, I was alone completely. Uh, Nas was not allowed to be with me, and it was like very hard for me to sleep because I was scared, you know, uh, if I would not wake up, you know, and uh, I was already having breathing problems because of my chest infection and. Later they told me that I, I, because of my heart attack, the lungs got some water and they got infected as well. So, so I wasn't sure whether to use the oxygen or not, you know, because I was trying to reduce the use of oxygen. I wasn't sure if I can sleep or not, or should I sleep or not. And this went on for like seven days, where I couldn't really sleep. You know, because I was scared of sleeping and I would just sleep for like 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, stuff like that. And uh, and all this pain through throughout this, all these injections and them putting different types of stuff onto me. Uh, from antibiotics to insulin to stuff in my tummy and and I had to measure my, my susu, you know, how much I, my urine I'm... I'm uh, uh, putting out, you know, and uh, but I was grateful that I didn't have to be attached with something. I was doing it on my own. Uh, surrounding me were were different things. Like there was this one guy who was just nonstop coughing, you know, but he couldn't move. His high neck was up, and he was being fed through drips and other stuff. And every day I'd see the guy who would bring the food for everyone, would put the food there next to him. And he was at the corner near the washroom. So whenever I go to the washroom, I'd see like, it's still there, the food is untouched. And, and yeah, and this went on for like, the, throughout the period. First he was on my left and then it was when I was moved out and I was brought back in. Um, he was on my right, on this side, and so either way, I I saw him from both angles, and he was suffering because of smoking, basically, and uh, and so so eventually on my I think it was my second last day in the hospital when when I saw these guys they were because now I was in the corner so I saw these guys they were bringing this metal thing you know to take the body and I was like fuck uh, is this guy on me and uh, he died man he died uh, he died he wasn't like that old or so but he died because of smoking and uh, one of the main reasons I got this is because of her sm uh, smoking uh, was majorly because of smoking too so he died and I was already light-hearted and my heart was in pain and I just couldn't take it and I just ran out of the hospital when I saw uh, this person bring the, the metal thing, you know. I, I, I just like, without my mask, without anything, I was just like, let, you know, told the nurses, please let me just stand outside. I can't take this. So, like this, are so many people were suffering that in the hospital, they, uh, and even with my my lighted light heart and my damaged heart, uh, this it's, it's hard not to care, you know. Uh, like there was this guy, non-stop. He would keep screaming and screaming and screaming all night long. But he'll take some breaks. But man, old man, to to come see me, see me, come someone see me, you know. 
and I asked around and they said the family left him and he's just on oxygen and I don't know and it's just that and anyways throughout the suffering and, and going through this after you know knowing this that uh, cardio came the, their specialist came and they said okay fine they will uh, they think that my lungs are okay and I'm stable now and my heart is stable comparatively but I need to go to an NGO uh, immediately so uh, on Friday like almost after a week of staying in the hospital I was uh, um, discharged from the hospital and then um, and then we drove basically um, we we came back here we came back home we rested a little bit and by the way it was so hot over there in the hospital I was just dying of heat as well and uh, thanks to my friends whoever came and visited and thanks to the friends who brought me stuff and they got me an air, air cooler so that was helpful but still it was super super hot uh, anyhow so so sitting in the car was like a blessing for me and the air gone and everything I was like wow it's amazing because I couldn't choose right we, we can't choose uh, the hospital chose me you know and uh, it was a public hospital and I had to like that was that you know but anyways so so we, we we drove back and then we went to the uh, we had an appointment at seven so we reached home like back by five we rested a little bit went for the appointment doctor saw the the reports and everything and and he told like you know he told us that this was like uh this was massive and and uh, how did you like it was just minutes you know if I would not have reached the hospital of a few minutes uh, up and down and I would have come to my to this you know to this ship and die and, and it's just like how uh, See, from my place, I have no idea where I would go for a hospital, you know, but in a place where, which is like one and a half hour away from where I live, in a strange small town, I knew where I had to go. So this is all universe and Allah and how, how, how uh, it, it does things. And, and so he, he told us that definitely one stunt for sure, two or maybe more could happen that could possible very very possible so so yeah I came back and this was on Friday uh, and then we agreed to move move forward and do this like I, I got admitted on Sunday uh, to the hospital and then Monday morning was my procedure so that whole time so many prayers from so many people from all around the world uh, from my partner how how Nas handled this it's amazing and uh, so yeah throughout I was like you know I, 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 I have to fight this I have to be strong and and I couldn't read messages from people because I just couldn't it was just now I know that how the heart responds to feelings and emotions because at, especially at that time during that uh, crucial time I, I couldn't read uh, anything because it would really literally pain uh, so I had to stop you know doing that and once I, I actually had another attack because of reading all of these things where the you know they give you that pill to put in the tongue and stuff during my stay in the hospital so it's it's really really difficult you know uh, but during this time all these people uh, everybody prayed and prayed in different languages in different religions in different parts of the world for me I'm so grateful for that I'm so so grateful uh, and then I have so many people who love me and 
and yeah so on sunday we were like oh, okay uh this is what's going on and uh, it was very tense as well we am i was trying to be positive goof everyone around in the family groups because i can't tell them you know like you know what's really going on anyway so so yeah like a morning we woke up and then i was just listening to a few songs by like you know uh sufi songs mostly uh and uh, crying and and giving my heart energy and imagining uh that my heart is 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 already clear and all that and and giving my everything to it you know and asking and begging to be free and to give be given another chance and yeah so then after that around 8 7:30 something uh they took me uh to the ngo place you know and uh and then i was just waiting there and then sitting with nas and then and they started prepping me and uh i had to shave a lot of me <laughs> a lot of me and uh, like my hands you know all chikna uh they had to shave me and put some stuff and then the, the same butterfly thing inside just in case they had to give me medicine um and then and then yeah and then i was just on that table with all those scanners and and, and x-ray stuff and screens and uh they they went through my hand you know they put in the ink and and i was just constantly praying and 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 then there it was you know it was nothing i was there was no block you know and i was like what how you know like the doctor everybody was like shocked that how is this possible you know and and at that moment i knew that i was first given a chance by by surviving all of this and then second given a chance by not having a, uh, any stunts being put inside my my body uh not even one you know so i was just in tears and in shocked in a good way and and in this belief that we, we we need to believe in ourselves we need to believe in the energy that the strength that uh, allah the universe has given us to heal ourselves you know but it's just that we have to believe we have to do it we just and so with all those prayers combined and with all this energy and everything i i am sitting here with uh, with um, damaged heart i'm i'm recovering and i i but what i've learned from this is is huge like one i hate smoking now it's not about how oh, i need to quit smoking i hate it i i just hate it because i uh, it 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 hurt so many people that i love it hurt me and it hurt my creator and it hurt uh, it killed so many people like uh, i experienced one that in front of me and then the rest of the things i have already like uh working on my lifestyle waking up early and all those things uh, you know uh food you know going plant based completely for at least 6 months so let's see how that goes and so yeah so that's that's a little bit of my story and uh uh the reason for me to tell this story is that we all think you know that oh we we are not you know we are doing good you know <laughs> we are just like 30s or we are in our 40s and oh it's okay that that other person is smoking or uh, doing so much drinking and this and that we are okay man you never know <laughs> you never know when what is going to happen to you uh i was delaying my insurance i was delaying uh, i literally had all of these not delaying but just you know a normal thing making sure you doing the right insurance and getting the right test done i had everything and i was about to do those tests and before that i got hit and i could have died 
and uh, the same goes for smoking the same goes for us delaying that oh what's important what's uh, actually like we, we we don't look at things which are important and urgent which is our health which is uh, the love around us our, our families which are all like on a on a tiktok on a, on a, on a limited time period right and our focus is on all the the materialistic things that we want but not on our family or our friends or our health you know or our mental health on our on our spiritual health so so please learn from this please learn from this that one uh even if you're doing things uh in balance like you you still need to take care of yourself uh the new 40 is 30 it's not 40 anymore uh s- know what you're putting in your body because these days uh even eggs are fake you know even milk is fake there's so many things that if something that's not supposed to have more than 2 3 ingredients has 20 ingredients written on the box don't put it in your body you know so because of all of these canned and processed food that we are having uh, our life span is going to deteriorate and and smoking of course you know it's 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 something that i should have stopped long time ago and it's something one should avoid you know it's not something like you you can't quit i i i quit like one disaster and it's gone you know and uh, and not just gone i I tend to hate it. I don't know if I should thank the experience of a guy dying in front of me or not, but yeah, that is something I can never forget. Uh, his whole suffering for seven days because of smoking and how he just passed away. And so yeah, just take care of yourself and uh, work out and take out time for your loved ones. Please, you know, you never know when uh, it's your last day or their last day. Uh, and 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 spend spend time living a bit you know not not just trying to survive uh this whole fiasco and uh and take care of yourself and so will i i will learn a lot from this and i i, I truly believe that this is a miracle and i've been given another chance and i really want to utilize this chance use this chance to uh spend more time with my family my loved ones my friends uh my partner of course she's just amazing and uh and eating healthy and living a longer life and enjoying this life this beautiful life that uh, allah has given us this universe has given us so yeah uh, thank you to listening to all of my blabbing and whatever but uh, i think it's important to share such experiences uh and yeah so that's about it over and out